In my last video, I spoke about the signal that causes the heart to contract. In this video, we're gonna get into how the contraction actually happens, from the action potential in the cardiac muscle cells all the way to the contraction. So let's do it. Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. And by the end of this video, you're gonna understand cardiac muscle contraction. Now we've looked at the SA node, the AV node, and the Purkinje fibers. And for a brief review, we said that the signal for the heart to contract starts at the SA node. That signal then spreads to the atria, causing them to contract. The signal then goes to the AV node and spreads to the ventricles via the bundle of his, the left and right bundles and the Purkinje fibers. In this video, we're gonna build on this, but if any of that sounds confusing, make sure to check out my last video. I'll link to that in the description below. Now, let me tell you about this awesome feature of heart muscle cells. It's so cool. They're electrically connected. It's like all the muscle cells of the ventricles and the atria are part of a close-knit community, sharing signals and stimulating each other. So when one cardiac muscle cell in the atria gets stimulated, that signal spreads to all the other cardiac muscle cells in the atria and the atria contract. And when one cardiac muscle cell in the ventricles gets stimulated, it spreads to all the cardiac muscle cells in the ventricles and they contract. It's all or nothing. They're like, hey, if we're gonna do this, we're all gonna do this. Cause sharing is caring. Okay, maybe that's a bit much. Actually, I remember when I was in my systems physiology lab back in college, we did an experiment with a frog heart. I think it was a frog or maybe it was a turtle. Anyways, we had to stimulate one section of the ventricle with a needle by just kind of scraping it to see what would happen. And whenever we did that, the entire thing would contract. It was so cool to see. Okay, let's talk about another important concept, the speed at which these signals travel in different parts of the heart. It's not the same everywhere. When the signal starts at the SA node and it spreads to the atria, it moves at a speed of around one meter per second. When it reaches the AV node, it slows down to around 0.04 meters per second. Then in the Purkinje fibers, it speeds up again, hitting a whopping five meters per second. Now, you may be wondering why we need these different speeds. Well, it's all about the order of things. Blood first goes to the atria, and then the atria contract. This sends the blood to the ventricles. Now, we don't want the atria and ventricles contracting at the same time. That wouldn't work. We need the ventricles to fill with blood from the atria before they contract so that the ventricles can send as much blood as possible to the body. So it's a good thing that there's a slowdown at the atrioventricular node. In fact, it's crucial. And just like the heart's electrical signals create a smooth and efficient contraction, we try to create smooth and efficient learning experiences for you making biology fun in the process. So don't miss a beat, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for more great biology videos just like this. All right, now that we've covered the heart's electrical connections and the speed of conduction, let's dive into what happens inside the muscle cells, since this is where the contraction is actually happening. When the SA or AV node sends a signal, the membrane potential of cardiac muscle cells quickly depolarizes meaning it gets more positive and it does so pretty quickly. This is because sodium channels open and that allows sodium ions to rush into the cell. Sodium is a positively charged ion, so that makes sense. Positive in, it becomes more positive. Now, if you remember from when we looked at action potentials in neurons, what normally happens is sodium rushes in, depolarizing the membrane. Then potassium rushes out, repolarizing the membrane. This happens very quickly. It usually takes around one millisecond. Well, with cardiac muscle cells, there's something that happens when the cell depolarizes. This positive charge causes calcium to be released from a structure inside the cell that's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, calcium is also a positively charged ion. So now that we have this positively charged ion being released into the cell, the cell won't repolarize as quickly. In fact, we get a phase called the plateau phase. In other words, the repolarization, it slows down significantly, causing the action potential in cardiac muscle cells to last up to 300 milliseconds, way longer than the one millisecond of neurons. And at that time, the calcium is gonna get pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that's when we see the 
effect of potassium ions leaving the cell and the membrane potential being restored to its resting state. Now here's the crucial part. Calcium is being released and calcium is crucial for muscle contraction. In fact, calcium release is the thing that triggers muscle contraction. So here's what happens. As calcium starts getting released, the muscle cells are gonna start contracting and the tension in the cardiac muscle is gonna increase. And once calcium starts being pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the muscle cells are gonna start relaxing and return to their original state the cardiac muscle contraction cycle is now complete and it can start over again. By the way, as a side note, I have a very comprehensive guide that goes through the details of the cardiac cycle and all the stuff that's involved with that. It's free and I'll link to it in the description below. So what we've seen is that when the SA or AV node sends a signal, that causes sodium ions to rush into cardiac muscle cells. This causes depolarization. Then calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum causing the plateau phase. And during this phase, calcium ion is gonna cause the muscle cells to contract. Once calcium starts getting pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the cell repolarizes. And since calcium is no longer around, the muscle cells relax. And then the process will happen again when another signal comes along. And that's the action potential and contraction in cardiac muscle cells. Now we've spoken about the fact that calcium causes contraction, but how exactly does that process happen? Check out this next video where I talk about that in detail. That process is so much fun. So make sure to check it out. I mean, all biology is so much fun. So check out everything. Why am I so excited? Now, I have a question for you. What's the most surprising or unexpected thing you learned about the heart or its function in this video? Share your aha moment in the comments below and let's celebrate the wonders of the human body together. Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun and I'll see you in the next video.